Well, hey, Fawn. Hey, Peter. Thank you so much for joining us on the Geekcentric podcast. It really means a lot for you to take the time. How are you both doing today? We're doing great. great. Yeah, it's yeah. been fun to, to get in. to talk about the movie, finally. Yeah. 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 I was like taken back by, by the presentation that you guys did today. Uh, some great insight. Actually, to start, you know, I think what was great is that you guys opened up with how Wishing on a Star has always been a part of Disney's legacy. And one thing that really stood out uh, that you mentioned was that this story is going to take place before all the stories that we know and love. So before Snow White and Sleeping Beauty, why did you guys decide to set the story in a time before those stories? We want to create an original fairy tales. So we're looking at wish period that hasn't been done before. Mm -hmm. And the medieval period has a really great um, sensibility and opportunity for something beautiful. So that's mm -hmm. where we, why we landed there. Nice, nice. That's awesome. Now, you know, another huge part of Disney's legacy is animation. And, you know, what I absolutely love is that there is a sense of tradition with something fresh. So I wanted to know, how does Wish continue the legacy of Disney animation while also finding its own voice? Well, certainly, you know, building upon the past and building upon many of the shorts, technology has changed and allows us to do things that we haven't done before. Mm -hmm. But it's the nice balance of of uh, the feeling of uh, the traditional hand-drawn animation, mm -hmm. but uh, with with all the uh, 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 CG and and to be able to build the build the world with it, the yeah. blending of those two was important to us. And there's, there's such a textural quality to the look of the footage that we saw today. Like you referenced watercolors as, as sort of a source and you really do see it in the background and in the textural elements of, of the environment, which is just, it really just comes out and, and oh, hits so you in the face. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it really stands out. It, it really does. Now, Fawn, you have worked for Disney for a while. I think since like 2011. 2011? Yeah, wow. So, you know, I, I wanted to know, how do you think the culture at Disney has shaped your growth and development as a filmmaker over those years? There's an increasing number of women in the uh, story department that I have seen. So that has created a dynamic conversations amongst the story team, right? When we, when we cast story artists, we're trying to bring in people with different point of view mm -hmm. so they can bring themselves to the story. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, I, I think that that's one thing that Disney's really getting right, you know, I, I, is, is implementing people that can bring their own stories to help tell these new stories and really you know representation culture it's all it's all there in its own way and it's such a beautiful thing to see it kind of amass itself in, in a sort of collaborative collective in this movie um you know peter you know you also have have a, a, quite a career with with disney uh, frozen frozen 2 obviously some big ones um it w with working on wish is there anything holistically in your experience that you've learned while working on this movie, maybe something that is, you know, you, you haven't really done dealt with before in past experiences, anything new? Um, I think what I most learned is what's most important, and this has stood the test of time, is story and character, but really making them uh, relatable and believable, creating a world that is believable, not necessarily realistic, believable, where the audience is is drawn into it and uh, you believe this world actually exists. So if you can get all those elements right, uh, you've got something. Yeah, relatability. I think that that's, that's something that will connect with all audiences. Sure. And, you know, you mentioned that today in the presentation, which I thought was was very poignant, given the sort of where we are in, in with with cinema and and how we experience movies and how we go and and what audiences really want to take away. For you guys, I wanted to know for both of you is is there how do you relate to your to this movie and is there any characters that you specifically relate to? I love Asha and I love the how she doesn't take herself too seriously, mm -hmm. right? And she's able to speak her mind and and. She doesn't need to feel the pressure to be something perfect, someone perfect. Mm -hmm. And the sense that I can see myself in her mm -hmm. and going on this journey and feel inspired by her choices and action, I think that will bring empowerment, the sense of empowerment to the audience. Nice. Awesome. How about for yourself? Katie? I think, well, I would have said Asha also, but I'll, I'll switch to Magnifico. <laughs> Not that I want to be a villain, <laughs> yeah. but I love characters that are nuanced. I love characters that you may not understand why they're making the choices they do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, you may not like the choices they make, right. but you can understand why they're making the choices. So yeah. I find with Magnifico, I can I can at least understand it. Yeah, a villain that you can not necessarily relate to, but like you want to understand their motives Correct. and then 
is it their intentions or their motives that you really, as a mm -hmm. as an audience member, have to kind of sure. morally challenge, right? Yes. Like, is it yes. is there is there something? Yeah, there? we say that Magnifico is someone you would love to hate. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's great, and you know, you guys were describing him, and I was thinking. Uh, you know, you're basically describing Chris Pine, you know, <laughs> so, um, you know, you, and speaking of the cast, you do have such a great cast. You have Ariana DeBose and you have Chris Pine and, as well as Alan Tudyk. And you guys mentioned the voice acting process, you know, especially with Alan kind of coming in and, you know, going one way with the voice. And he said, hey, why don't I try something like this? And that worked. Um, how do you guys work with the voice actors so that they can bring themselves to these characters? And does that in any way influence what the final product or the the sort of final animation would look like for those characters? Yeah, for sure. We, we, we told them from the start, like, hey, feel free to ad lib. And a lot of time people will come in with ideas or questions of like, what's the motivation behind that? And both, well, Ariana, Chris Pine and Alan Tudyk, both, uh, they all do that. They all bring that part of themselves into the project. Yeah. I always like, love to in voice actors, because it's not necessarily just putting on a character's voice, it's finding the character's soul, sure. yeah. right? And really kind of dialing in and finding out where this character is and what their journey looks like and, and embodying that in the voice. So I think from what we've seen, the, the 20 minutes, it does really feel like Ariana is, you know, she's very bold in her, her approach and she wants to really carve out her own path. Um, so I think that that's absolutely perfect. Um, you know, this has been a huge year for animation. Uh, there's so many great movies have, have been hitting theaters. Um, I want to know, if, I know you guys have been working on this movie, but have you guys had a chance to see any other fantastic animated films in theaters recently or, or over the past year that has been maybe inspiring to you? I have watched them all and I feel like there's this sense of incredibly excitement that people are coming to the theater to watch animated movies yes so that that makes us excited also yeah. that wish is coming out in theater yeah, yeah. Same, <laughs> same i've watched them all uh i i think just the fact that the world is embracing animation right now yeah. is is it, it helps all of us if i were can i put you on the spot and ask you if there was one that you were to pick anything that you think that would stand out in your mind as um, being really uh, influential uh, look there there's many yeah um i actually like elemental yeah um i thought the creativity in that was amazing yes peter peter stone was we had the opportunity to, i had the opportunity to talk to him and such an honor he came to toronto as well sure. showed some footage and yeah the, just a sneak peek into that world and sure. seeing how it actually materialized is is absolutely great yes. um you know there's so much to be proud of with this movie, right? It's been obviously a long time coming. You guys have both been working on it for quite some time. If you were to necessarily maybe identify one thing for each of you that you're very proud that you brought to this movie, what would that be and why? It's hard to pinpoint one thing. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking about the movie until you said what we brought, because uh, it's such a collaborative medium. It's hard to separate sometimes, sure. you know, what it is we brought other than, you know, creating an incredible, incredible team mm -hmm. of artists and, and storytellers that, uh, to me, that's what I'm most proud of. Awesome. Yeah, no, I think that, like you said, that's the collaboration piece. And, and you mentioned it in the presentation, Fawn, it, you know, someone brings something to the table and it just changes everything yeah. and it adds a new layer and I think that that's fascinating. And that's the excitement, the exciting yeah. part of it, right? You come up with this idea that you think was the greatest. Right. And then we get onto the discussion and we're like, wow, we can do even <laughs> yeah. better than yeah. that. <laughs> well, just to wrap things up, my last question is for you, Fon. You know, you mentioned today that as a young girl, you were inspired to draw because of the Disney movies you watched in the past. and. You know, you grew up wanting to kind of aspire to be that. And now here you are directing a Disney movie, but not just directing a Disney movie. You're directing a movie that celebrates everything that inspired you. Do you have any words of wisdom or anything that you would want to share to someone who inspires to be someone like yourself someday? It could be scary to take a, a path that everyone may tell you is it's risky or you know it's not logical but i think i've been following my intuition yeah. <laughs> since that day i decided to mm -hmm. pursue animation as a career and i think that courage if it occurs to you i think just grab onto it and follow it yeah be your own origin story right you yeah. know make your own origin so absolutely love that Fawn Peter, thank you so much for taking the time today. It really means a lot. Uh, thank you so much for bringing the presentation to Toronto to show some of the great footage. I look forward to seeing it in November, but I got to say the song's already stuck in my head, so I'm, I'm ready to rock. So. Right, <laughs> Amazing. Awesome. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much.